Good day, fellow investors. Today I have another value stock, actually a strong buy, which is YY or Joy, traded on the NASDAQ ticker YY. I have looked a little bit at analysts' targets, JP Morgan, 145, City, 167, two Asians, a little bit lower, but the letter wasn't updated yet. We have Morgan Stanley with 169 and Deutsche with 135. If we compare to the stock price, there has been a recent drop. Archigos also impacted this a little bit, but we are now at 100 with the stock targets on average 50% higher. You can expect a return of 50% over the next 12 months. Also, we'll see later in the financials, there is a huge cash pile close to the market capitalization, which means that there is upside, but there is also, there should be a margin of safety in the form of cash. So what you pay, you get in cash, and therefore it is value, but also huge potential upside. And that is why all these banks have high price targets. Of course, the stock did really well over the last 10 years almost. It's a 10 bagger since the IPO as they develop these online platforms, YY Live in China. There have been normal ups and downs and now they are again up, but there is still potential and we'll see later how big is the potential. Also, there is a small dividend yields. They plan an increase in dividends, increase in buybacks as they return the huge amount of cash to shareholders. Let's do a business overview, then discuss the financials, the cash, the valuation of the parts. We'll see also other platforms that they own. They have just sold YY, we'll discuss that. We'll discuss the issues, the risks, and then you will see how it fits your investment requirements. If you get value from this, please click that like button to support the channel and of course consider subscribing. So this is YY, also the ticker is YY, later they changed the name into Joy and this is the live streaming platform in China. Now they have sold this to Baidu and you have to check my Baidu video that we made last week, also owned by Cathy Wood, so another buy there for Asian internet tech but this is yy now they have sold yy live in china and what's left is bigo live likey on number two and they are growing this platforms all around the world they have been banned in india so they have lost a lot of users there but still if we look globally when we remove about 200 50 million of YY users, there is still 200 million users of these apps globally. If we look at Big O Live, it's gaming, it's entertaining, so live presentations, live entertainment from Big O Live, there are trending categories, mostly games from where I see here, Game Live, of course, Half Naked Girls, as always, on these platforms, entertaining the population. And they make money if you give them these beans or views that the producers, content cre creators can then exchange for money. They are proud of their engagement. 40% of users hosted live streaming sessions every single day. This is because they are forced to do so because if not, they don't get paid, I think. So that's something also to be checked deeper. But this is what it is, an app a little bit more engaging than TikTok and a little bit more diversified on a larger content producing base, not just the key players as on TikTok. At least that is what they say. And the management from the last conference call transcript firmly believes that Big Live has the potential to create at least four times the scale of YY Live in terms of revenue. And YY Live was just sold to Baidu for 3.6 billion, four times, that's 10, 12 billion. Remember the market cap of 8 billion, so 12 billion is also huge value, not counting in the rest. Then we have Live V, again, from what I understand, something like Instagram. Okay, again, a new app that they are trying to promote across the globe. 
global average mobile monthly average users decreased as India banned the Chinese owned apps but still Likey increased to 120 million, Big Life to almost 30 million, Hago to 16 million. When I sum this up the monthly average number of users is around 160 million which is pretty significant and growing fast in specific countries. So they are going into the countries where the focus is not yet from the bigger players so they try to have their first move advantage Latin America, Southeast Asia, Japan, Middle East especially. So very interesting choice to expand these live apps. They are working on monetization. They have just started monetizing like key with live streaming, advertising and planning also in the future to do e-commerce on the platforms. Hago again number one casual game oriented social platform in the world. So this is why why these are the platforms this is the business but even more interesting are the financials. Revenues are growing extremely fast. Bigo has reached 3 billion renminbi, 3.5 billion the whole revenues with monetization of Likey that just started. But, but this is just one side of the medal for YY. If we look at the cash pile, so at the end of 2020 they had 3.6 billion US dollars on the balance sheet. Keep in mind the market cap of 8 billion. Then they sold YY Live China for 3.6 billion. When we sum that up, we are already at 7.2 billion in cash. So just that covers 90% of the market cap. That's insane. So all the other upside from the apps is there practically for free. Of course in a sum of parts valuation we have to net some things out. They said they will invest 1 billion for growth, 1 billion for repayment of convertible bonds, they will make new investments, I think there will be some taxes on the YY sale. So let's say that the net cash position is down to 4 billion to make it conservative. This strategy is from the last conference call. However, there is also the potential. The current revenues are at 2 billion dollars per year and now it's the question, okay, how much are these apps valued with 2 billion dollars in revenues? Most of our analysts that I have received the, their buy reports have sales from 2.2 to 3.2 on the value of Big O Life. So on 2 billion in sales, if we put sales from 2 to 3.3 times sales, value is at least from 6 to 10 billion. Plus, there is also 31% stake in Huya that I haven't even mentioned yet. Huya, that it's owned by Tencent now, 4 billion market cap, 31% stake, I think it should be around 1 billion net. 4 billion cash, 1 billion huya, then we have the value of the apps, Bigo that's making good revenues, Likey that's just started to be monetized with about 160 million users. How much is that worth? At two times sales we are at 4 billion, so already the sum of everything is at 9 billion. At Three times sales, we are already at 6 billion plus the cash plus Huya, we are at 11 billion. So you have the price targets that are already 50% higher there. If we compare this to Snapchat, 265 million daily active users, okay, 22% growth, so a little bit more users. The growth is in line there, but if I look at total revenue, we are at 2.5 billion for Snapchat. If I compare this to the market cap, we are at the price to sales ratio of 37, something like that. So Bigo has a price to sales ratio of 2, 3, Snapchat has 37. If Katie Wood picks it up that we have a growing emerging market platform with huge growth, huge momentum, growing fast, with all the value, with the cash, at two times, three times sales, and on the other hand we have Snap Snapchat on 37 times sales, so if she picks it up, she might invest and really push it 
higher. That's the bullish thesis. At 10 times sales, the valuation just of Bigo would be 40 billion, which is really, really insane. But as it is usual and common with Chinese businesses, we need to check the numbers. And Muddy Waters, that investigates ch Chinese businesses, is saying that YY and Bigo are complete frauds. And I will need your help here to determine whether it is true. What is true? Are all the investment banks wrong or is Muddy Waters wrong? When I bought Apple in 2016, I really checked who is using what and I checked with my students. This is the picture. So there was good market penetration and that's something we will have to check here too. We have the Muddy Waters short report that was issued November of last year saying how YY Live is about 90% fraudulent, international live streaming business Bigo seems barely more real. You can download the report from Muddy Waters, just say Joy Muddy Waters on Google. However, if we look at their thesis, they say that all the revenues, 84% of reported consolidated revenues appear to be fraud fraudulent, similarly with Bigo, where they say that all the beans and all the gifts are incentivized fraudulent by the company, also the revenue, and how that is what is pushing traffic, improving the number and not real activity. Also, in typical Chinese style, YY founded Bigo only that later the chairman of Bigo invested and then sold Bigo to YY for 1.45 billion in cash, where we here receive more shares and more cash. So you can see here the inception date of Bigo in Singapore, September 2014, and then the chairman invested in December of 2014. So this is this intercompany transactions that are often scams. However, Joy refutes the report. We have seen also Baidu bought YY, Baidu made an analysis, and they said that also it is not correct. But I have checked a little bit on App Analyzer. Where are those apps downloaded? So Cambodia, Vietnam, Italy, high activity in Italy, Nigeria. So I really ask your help to see whether you are using Bigo or Live V. I have checked Google Trends, not really booming lately. So stable Bigo Live. And now we have to see whether YY is real or fake. What do I need from you? You have my email investwithsven at gmail.com or also in the comments below. If you want to send me snips or examples of how you use and how much you spend on Bigo or Livey, send it on my email. Also in the comments below, state the country where you are, the age, your age, and then say whether you use Bigo or Livey as they are a global brand in the comments. There should be a lot of you that are using and tell us how many of your friends are using it, how did you acquire it and whether you like it or not. If we see a lot of engagement then it will be true. If not then we'll have to research even deeper. That's a start. You can also contact me on Facebook, LinkedIn if you want to send me pictures and examples of why this is good. If it's really good then it could really be a bargain. Also on frauds, how long can a fraud last? You just might remember Wirecard. Look at this. It lasted for 10 years before it faulted. So also these companies, there are many things and you have to test and retest or simply avoid if it is too risky. Bigo is spending a lot on advertisements on Facebook to grow. So it's not growing organically, which is something that I also don't really like, but it will be interesting. So this is from Mobile Action, also this ad spend. And they said how it has interesting ads, bad reviews, increasing users, and unbelievable amounts of advertising. Also, when there is so much advertising needed to grow, I as a value investor question the moat, the sustainability of the business. How long can they grow or how costly is that growth? So also ask yourself, is this business going to be there in five, 10 years? Of course, there is the cash, 
But then there is always the question, how is that cash going to be used? So in summary, we have huge upside potential. If it's not fake, I'm looking forward to collecting more data and then I'll first, of course, update on my stock market research platform. And then I also made an update video on this to really decide whether it is a fake or not. If it's not a fake, it's a strong buy. If it's a fake, we might want to short this. I'm looking forward to all your messages, to all your comments down below. Let us know, click that like button, and I'll see you in the next video.